Hi, everybody, and welcome to Adobe Live. My name is Flynn. Uh, we'd like to begin by acknowledging the traditional owners on the land in which we meet today. And we'd also like to pay respects to elders past, present, and emerging. Um, here we are on Adobe Live. We're going to bring in our amazing guest in one second. Uh, we're using the chat at be.net slash live. So if you're watching somewhere else, like over on YouTube, and you want to say hi, ask questions, all that sort of stuff, you can do it at be.net slash live. Come over to the Jeff Chen stream. Let's bring him on. Jeff Chen, how are you doing? Good. How are you going, Flynn? Yeah, I'm good, thanks. Um, it's been a long time since we've had you on, so it's great to see you, and thanks for spending some time with us. Oh, it's my pleasure, and um, thanks for having me on here. This is this is awesome. So a um, couple of new people in the stream. Um, Kira, it's great to see you. Uh, we've got Steve in the chat. Johanna's looking after us as our amazing mod. She'll be sharing all sorts of um, useful links and stuff like that as we're chatting about things, but... Before we get started into this session, which I'm super pumped because this is something that I'm so not familiar with, um, and I'm really, ex I'm really excited when you told us about what you were doing. Um, so I'm just going to sit back and shut up probably this whole stream. Um, but uh, for those who aren't as familiar with your work, maybe you could tell us a little bit about what you do. Um, I know there's like mentor, illustrator, artist. You like mm -hmm. run your own community. You do so much cool stuff. Like, what's your ele elevator pitch when you do so many, so many different things? Yeah, it's a bit weird. Um, when people ask me what I do, and I'm not really sure what to say, because if I say concept artist, I think a lot of people don't know what that is. And then there's like so much more about it than just that one title as well. Mm. So <laughs> sometimes I just say artist and uh, just let it go from there. Leave it at that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, cool. Well, maybe we should check out some of your some of your work. Let's have like a sneak peek at some of the stuff that you stuff that you do. Sure, uh, sounds good. That. So we're showing your desktop now. So this is your work yep. over at ArtStation. That's right. Um, so this is, yeah, typically the kind of things I do. I like to draw uh, characters digitally and mainly for games or like uh, some graphic novels and um, some film stuff as well. So typically you'll see me do stuff like this, um, more stylized. Australian internet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, Something like this. Yeah. Um, so this is like a pretty classic uh, Son Goku or Sun Mukong. I don't know if you guys know, yeah. like the Monkey King. Monkey um, King. Just a redesign of that. Or, and this is like very typical of like what you'd see from me. Just like something fantasy that has like magic and looks intimidating and will definitely destroy you if you get in their way. <laughs> yeah. I, so I get mad Reinhardt vibes from from yeah. this one. Was Reinhardt an inspiration for this from Overwatch? Yeah. Definitely. Awesome. Yeah. Overwatch. Um, that's like a big inspiration in like games like Dark Souls and all that. Mm. So I'm really into those kind of games. And like, yeah, Monster Hunter is like another one with like giant weapons um, and like cool armor and all that. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Um, besides that, I also uh, run a course as well. Let me quickly grab that. Maybe we should have opened this up earlier. Yeah. I think it's this one. Oh, no. Compelling. While you're bringing that up, I'll just mention. So this <laughs> is this is part one yeah. of a of a two part series. So we're we're here today. We're streaming from Australia as well. So for our American audience over there, g'day. How's it going? Um, I never say g'day. I just had to. Um, but um, it's, <laughs> it's it's nice to have you here. Um, so this is an hour long session. You can ask, feel free to ask questions in chat as we're going along. Um, Jeff has a lot of experience in lots of different areas, so I'm sure you can throw those questions in. We're going to be showing something cool in a sec as well. Um, but yes, yeah, it's part one of a two-part series, so we're back in 48 hours here in Australia. It's Tuesday lunchtime. I think in the US it's your evening, so we might be hanging out before, before your dinner. Um, but thanks for joining us, no matter where you are. Um, yeah, so this is the course that I was working on earlier. Um, I had to put a, like stops and everything because I had to put so much focus on this for two months um, mm -hmm. to get it done. Um, but basically it runs through everything that I do. So concept art, um, the way you should think about it, some fundamentals on art. So I go through like this kind of thing yeah. about painting. Um, yeah. Uh, so besides just the art side, there is like that teaching that I'm really passionate about. And as you said, community building. So uh, I do have like a Discord community that I run um, that's really focused on art growth and having like 
the friends there that can be that grow with you along the way as you mm. learn and teach yourself. That's um, a big part of like how I started my career as well. Yeah. No, that's awesome. Yeah. So like I remember from previous conversations, like you've, you've learned so much like just online from other online communities and you've created your own, lots of giving back and lots of hanging out and supporting each other, which is just super cool. You were doing yeah. Discord before I even knew what Discord was a thing. So um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> very cool. I was already late as well. It's been around for quite a while. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's, it's super cool and, and super important. Um, so yeah, so what, so when we're chatting about having you back on, um, first time this year, which is crazy. Um, but yeah, you were telling us about kit bashing. So yep. tell me more. So, uh, kit bashing, I'll grab this example. Um, so kit bashing is where you take assets that you create from artworks that you've done before. Uh, typically you'll see it in 3d so it's like creating little uh, pieces that are modular mm. so if you wanted to create like a room you'd have walls of like different lengths so then you, and you can just keep like placing them and um, pasting them in different areas to create new rooms and then you can use those to create new pieces as well um, in 2d you'd be grabbing pieces like uh, say I like this horn and I'll just grab this and now this is one of my pieces for my kit bashing so I'm basically creating a kit. Right. And then the effect of that is we get a lot of detail given to us at the start. And it's about like the clever arrangement of it um, that will make it into something new and like something interesting that's, that's probably not like the dragon that I'm starting off with. Right. Um, in this case, I'm probably going to target like I have in my mind that I probably want to do something that's more uh, maybe like a, a, a big demon guy or something <laughs> with like a, a weapon. Yeah. Um, or I don't know. I like to see where it takes me. Like uh, this technique is really fun as well because if you sit down and you don't know what to draw and you have like old works, then you could bring it up and then um, start to cut it up, take pieces, place it on here and then start to um, inspire yourself by like the happy accidents that come out of it. Right. Happy accidents. Yeah. I love it. The Bob yeah. Ross. Super cool. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Okay. So how many of these, how many of these things would you select? Like, I guess we're going through it now, but like, how yeah, much should we do jump you in need? Or... Yeah. Yeah. Go for it to you. Um, I like to think about it like this, like when I create a character, I like to have areas of resting space, areas of high detail, and I think distinct shapes. So we have a distinct shape from this horn. Um, this is pretty distinct as well. And we want to also look at like the, the graphic um, read. So the different values that we get in black and white like this. <coughs> so um, like a lighter value versus something that's mid-tone versus something that's more um, dark tone in this one. Right. So if I get that good variety, that will give me a, a more successful kit to work with um, when I kit bash. Cool. It's kind of like making a color palette. Like you want to have a little bit of everything. So you have like the tools to be able to create the artwork so you can have the contrast and everything. Exactly. Yeah. Nice. Um, what about like you, chat? I'm, I'm, <laughs> <laughs> so Jeff was telling me about this and I got super pumped and super excited as you can probably tell. But have you guys ever tried to do something like this? Have you ever done any kit bashing? Have you come across it in, in your work? Let us know in chat. And again, if you've just joined us, um, where the chat that we're using today is at behance.net slash live. And it's cool to have you hanging out with us. Um, just a couple of comments from chat as we're going along. Uh, Johanna, this is such yep. a cool technique that I'll definitely have to try next time I draw. Um, yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, Kita was saying his lighting and composition is amazing from your work before. Oh, thank you. Um, <laughs> right. I think this is the main kit I'll use. Um, but was there like a comment you want to read? Yeah, I got an early question, but whatever, let's do it. Um, yeah. uh, Devante okay. was asking, how do you feel about Epic buying ArtStation though? <laughs> oh, um, I don't know. I don't really have an opinion on that kind of thing. Um, I don't think it will affect us too much. In fact, yeah. maybe it's a good thing. There's more, more money for a website that I really enjoy. So I'm happy for them. <laughs> cool. Um, and yeah. same, same uh, person, Devante, um, hope I'm saying that 
correctly, I'm sure I'm not, um, saying I've tried kit bashing in Unity but never tried it in Photoshop. So yeah, so that you mentioned this kind of comes from the three, the three D world. Um, yeah, yeah, super right. cool. Um, quick note: when you have completed your kit, I suggest you don't just take the pieces and then like move it and use it. You should probably make a duplicate so you can just hold Alt and then drag the layer out to make a duplicate of it. Cool. And then uh, from here, you can do like all kinds of things. You don't have to use exactly what you um, picked. You can start to resize it, warp it, and change the shape so it ends up being something completely different from what you started with. Nice. And are these, do these need to be like smart objects or any particular type of thing to do this, or does it not matter so much? Um, since we'll be painting over, I think it's okay to not make it a smart object. It can just cool. be pixels and um, it'll work out okay. Nice. All right, I'm just trying to find a good start to this character. So Johanna has tried kit bashing in like miniature modeling version, says it's ridiculously fun. Um, Joe, uh, I'm most likely to kit bash in graphic design, but not in illustration. I must try it. Super cool. Oh, that sounds interesting. Yeah. Jessica, I've first time hearing it. about Thank it. Thank you. <laughs> Same. It was my first time hearing about it too. Um, Movement is asking, are we going to be able to see Jeff more regularly here again? Yeah, I hope so. I hope so too. That'll be fun. Fun fact, um, Australian internet always got in our way um, with having Jeff <laughs> more regularly. Um, and uh, we solve problems to get around that, but uh, that has been fixed. We're here, we're hanging out with Jeff. So uh, yeah, I'm sure you'll see Jeff more if we can get him on. I'll always find time to come on here. Um, it's really fun. I think like having time away, like to do some personal work on here is like the perfect thing for me. <laughs> yes. Yeah, sweet. Great. Um, okay. One more thing I want to talk about at this stage is we've created a new piece, um, to use from the pieces that we had just then. So this is like, we can use this and like merge it if we want, and then we could like and a smaller paste it somewhere else. And then this will start to create more cohesion in the new um, piece that we're making. Cool. Um, and when you, after you've placed your pieces, you can start to mold like the character that you want underneath. So you could like find the silhouette that you want to use. If I can find my brush. That's wrong thing. Um, so you can start to fill in the silhouette and then find more pieces and start to paste over. Nice. So you like, as you're creating things, you're then saving, saving that object and going, cool, I might use that again later and continuing to add to like that palette we were talking about before. Exactly. Cool. Okay. It doesn't look like much yet, but I have it all in here. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Hey, I've got a question as we're going along because we were chatting about your course yep. earlier before, which looks awesome, by the way. Um, I love that you just like, I've put everything in it. It's great. Um, <laughs> David was asking about the course. Um, do you talk yep. about pitching to clients at all? Or do you have any tips on getting a client to see your vision without having to draw for six plus hours? Um, I highly suggest not jumping into the final design or like not being um, too precious about the first design you make, especially for concept art, you want to be open about um, the different possibilities. And like, that's something the client wants to see as well. So when I first pitch to the client, I would be sending in at least like three to five different design ideas that revolve around their brief. Um, if that's what you mean, like after you've got the client, if you haven't had, if you don't have the client yet, then I suggest um, having a good portfolio that represents what you want to do. Um, and what you put in there is really important because if you want to be a character designer, but then you put like a few environments, then you might have that client that happens to like environments. Um, and then you end up doing environment work instead of characters. So make sure you put the relevant stuff in 
and um, be open to sending a bunch of different ideas when you have the client. Cool. That's good advice. Yeah, a lot of experience dealing with different clients. Um, but that's definitely something that has like worked for me every time. As long as you communicate clearly and like you, you stay open um, mm. and not be uh, like when you get the critiques and like uh, feedback, you have to understand that like, you know, you're not the one who decides what the end result is. It's the client. So, um, and sometimes it's not really about the work being good or bad. It's more just about what the client's vision is. So it's really important to respect that. Cool. I like it. Um, got another question as we're going along. Um, so I see you using the mesh tool there. Um, Steve's yeah. asking, um, uh, do you ever use like liquify or puppet warp for any of this? Yeah, you do. Okay. Um, I, yeah, I love liquify. Uh, <laughs> oh, maybe not for this exactly. I think it's a bit slower because you have to open it up and like, you don't get to see the other pieces as you're liquefying because they're on different layers. Right. But, uh, for painting, yeah, I, I absolutely love, um, using liquify. Yeah. It's like our cheat when we make mistakes, like, um, I don't know if you heard, but like when you flip, you like refresh your eyes and you get to see um, anything that's not balanced. Yeah. And uh, liquify is that quick way of like, oh, okay, I made a mistake. Um, I'm going to go into liquify and then just, you know, change it into whatever you need it to be. Yeah. Um, imagine doing that in traditional. Like, I really wish I could do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The flipping thing is, is like just, universally like such a such a valuable thing it's so funny how our brain like yeah takes thing in I, I know there's some graphic designers in the chat and david was mentioning he's a graphic designer and that's the world that i'm from originally and um that's something you need to do with typography quite a lot as well like flip it yeah. reflect it to to see the kerning and the um how it sits as a shape uh within the entire composition and it's so interesting like mm -hmm. how like many different visual creative fields the same the same technique can just work so well Exactly. Yeah. I think it's something to do with, um, perception as well. Like that can definitely be applied to anything visual. Um, and like something about the biases that our brain creates when we view like an image, mm. um, and getting used to it. So the flip is definitely useful for that, like breaking away from that and, uh, being able to see our mistakes yeah. and, uh, think it all properly balanced. And so how often would you, would, do you find yourself just flipping all the time? Like by like habit, like are you doing it all the it's time? It's probably a bad it... habit now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just, um, I realized it's a bad habit when I started to record my uh, workflow. And then I saw, I tried to speed it up for like YouTube to do, um, some speed paints. Oh yeah. And then I just couldn't watch it. It was like, it was going to give me a seizure. <laughs> yeah. We have to do one of those warnings at the front just in case anyone is yeah. interested by it. Yeah. Yeah. No, I totally get that. Uh, we got Demis Rusley in the chat, mutual friend Demis Rusley. Uh, hey, Demis. What's up, Demis? Great to see you. Um, and David was mentioning, thanks for the answers. Um, as a graphic designer, I think the same rules apply. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. Yeah. Um, but your, your, your answer was very great. There's a question from Movement in here. Um, are you a fan of using the mixer brush for this kind of process? Um, mixer brush is sort of on and off for me. Um, it's a bit hard to control and at this stage i think being very careful about where you place um the things that you're creating is a big part of it so uh mixer brush with its kind of looseness is better for like a fresh illustration where um i would probably purely just use mixer brush instead um, but maybe later down in this process when we start rendering i could introduce it and uh get some nice painterly looking brush strokes hmm. Good. Just checking in with chat. Um, Anna Daviscourt is here as well. Fantastic illustrator. Hey, Anna, it's great to have you here in chat. Um, Jan is saying, yeah, the flipping the canvas trick. Yes. Um, I'm just picturing you like doing your speed painting and then minimizing it down and knowing what that would have looked <laughs> like, just like jumping around. I've got it stuck in my head. So did you have to redo the speed painting 
Did you have to redo it? I can't think of a quick um, way around that. What did I do? Uh, I think I just left it. <laughs> <laughs> I think I didn't upload actually that one. Um, I was like, oh, and I tried to remedy that in the next ones. Um, I think I also, there's like a work around that for that as well. If you, I believe if you go to window, oh, there's a way you could duplicate your window. And then when you flip in the window that you're working on, it doesn't flip on the one that you've duplicated. Oh, really? So that way, mm. yeah, um, I've heard people talk about that. But the issue is you can't um, look at the, t the tools that I'm using. Yeah, like I feel it's like just showing just, just the canvas or something. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that makes it hard to follow along. Oh, it's funny, funny you should bring that up. Jacob, Jacob in chat just said, for doing speed, speed paints like that, I'd recommend capturing a separate window. <laughs> so uh, you, you made so it doesn't zoom in and rotate at that rapid pace. So there you go. So there is a there is a workaround to it. Still, that's a good that's a good tip. Maybe you could grab that as a single window and then also screen record over here and then just pop it back over the top in the edit. Yeah, for people who yeah don't really mind that the other windows disappear, that's totally like viable. And I think it looks better for YouTube sometimes as well, the big screen and just watching the illustration if people aren't too fussed about seeing every tool that's on Photoshop. Yeah, there's a lot. It's looking like, like a character yet to you or not yet? I'm, it's looking like a floral, like I'm thinking this is probably more Star Wars than anything, which I rewatched oh. recently, May the 4th. Um, we did a stream um, last week that was all about Star Wars. And then of course I just went down a Star Wars rabbit hole. Um, yeah. It reminds me a bit of um, the fight scene in episode two, where they're in the pit. Um, it doesn't look exactly like it, but it's um, kind of like an insectoid, insectoid kind of thing. Um, it looks like that, but with more feathers. Yeah. Um, Am I way alien off? I'm like way kinda, off, right? <laughs> I have no idea. Either. Like, <laughs> I'm just going with uh, what what the pieces are giving me, which is That's exactly cool. what I was saying at the start, right? Just yeah. uh, let it inspire you and then you work out from there. That's I cool. end up being some sort of like vibrant demon looking knight, which is something I always end up drawing <laughs> it's like your safe space like you're comfortable drawing yeah. that kind of thing you know you know how the posture and pose is kind of works exactly sometimes i wonder if i should break away from that but um i, I really enjoy it so mm. as long as i have fun I, I think that's a big part of art right um mm. i do it because it's fun so uh why not <laughs> yeah totally Yeah, we're just um, a couple of people in chat chatting about that kind of workaround. I think you're talking about window, arrange new window for the extra canvas. There you go. If anybody wants to try that out. Um, oh, yeah, that's it. New window. Oh, right. Yeah, that's it. That's it. So if you open that up, that should open a new window here. And that duplicates it. You can put it here, I believe. And if I flip, does it flip the other one? Oh, it does. Hmm. Well, <laughs> oh wait, no, I remember now when you zoom in and out, that's what doesn't uh, happen. The flip still happens. So you have to sort of resist if you open it, but at least you can zoom in and out a lot. Right. Okay, cool. That makes sense. That's that. Um, Joe in chat sees bird of paradise flower. Yeah, totally. Um, can totally see that. You ever seen the bird of paradise, like where people talk about like which way it's a bird and like sometimes it looks like it's a bird kind of doing this, but it's actually the other way around and it's the wings. Doesn't make sense, does it? It's, um, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little bit almost like one of those eye things. Like I always thought that it was like a squawking bird, but it's actually the wings. And if you look at it, like and change your eye a little way, you can, you can see, I'll find it. I'll bring it up. I'll bring it up towards this. I'm also trying to find this piece that I just placed, which is one of the issues with this workflow. You can lose where everything is. Um, I might start merging the head part so I don't get too confused. Here we go, merge that. Oh, there it is, okay. Um, yeah, a couple of people seeing Bird of Paradise in there. Um, 
Could be a boss from Remnant uh, from the Ashes. Remnant from the Ashes. That sounds like a good game if this could yeah, be a boss. Sounds, that's what I was going to say. I don't know the game, but that sounds cool. I thought it might be a yeah. Dark Souls thing because I haven't, I didn't never delve into um, Dark Souls. Lots of votes for Birds mm -hmm. of Paradise. <laughs> this is going to be on the catwalks next spring. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, um, I am inspired a lot by fashion as well. If you look at my references, um, I have a whole board just for high fashion and street fashion. Really? And um, I wow. think it's it's good. Yeah. Uh, this is like the Pinterest I have. Um, so portraits, well, where's the fashion stuff? Here it is. High fashion. I think it's great for um, concept art. And it's really essential that you keep up to date with fashion because that sort of comes out when you design. Yeah. Wow. I wouldn't have expected uh, that. So I didn't. I didn't. Oh, that's but it that does. It does make sense. <laughs> and you can see how things like fit and, and flow and different poses and things. So yeah, that does make a lot of sense. Exactly. Um, the high fashion ones the one I want to open. I don't know why I opened something else just then. Um, So some really cool stuff. You can imagine these like in the game, like you add a, <laughs> put a spear or put a sword and yeah. um, they'll become a fantasy character. Totally. And that's even more prominent in here. I think some of these you can take directly and just put it into a game. And you're like, okay, that's okay. <laughs> yeah, true. This could go into Star Wars easily. Oh, totally. This is, this is really cool. I really love that oh, wow. um, kind of scar. But uh, we're not here for that anyway. <laughs> we'll go back to the painting. <laughs> Super cool. Well, that brings me on to like a pretty important point. We, you do really have to use reference. Um, and I hope like that me showing like on my other monitor, I, I have like a bunch of references that it helps you guys understand that um, professionals and um, other really well-known artists, they all use it all the time. And it's not a bad thing at all. Mm. Um, we have another question, Devante. Um, do you ever translate your concept art to 3D? Um, I did at a when I just started off just to see if I liked 3D, but I think I enjoy the process of, of 2D more still. So I just like to create concepts and then other people do the 3D work. What's it like, like working as a concept artist, like with someone that is putting a three, you know, trying to put it together as 3D? Like, what's that, what's that process like? Like, you know, I think about like a graphic designer's experience, like working with a printer or something like that. Like, do you need to be best friends, speak yeah. the same language? Like, is there, do you work with people, you know, do you get better w over time working with particular like 3D artists? What's the insight into um, that world? I think 3D artists hate concept artists <laughs> because oh, no. we create impossible shapes for them and they're like, I, so I've had times where I've, uh, I think I had to model some guns, but I, at that time I was still quite new. So I, I didn't really have time to research guns. And then I send it to the model and they're like, like you don't, <laughs> he, he knew that I clearly didn't, I didn't understand how guns worked and all that. So um, doing that research and again, like reference, right? Um, that's mm. really important. Um, these days, it's a bit better. I, I have time to do the research and um, make it make sense for the modeler. Mm. But simple, there's like simple things that people run into. Like you might create uh, a cube shape like this, and then you want it to translate to a sphere. But then, how do like the um, these square ends become a sphere shape? That's very difficult to do in 3D. Right. So, um, yeah, like little mistakes like that can be frustrating for 3D artists. So yeah, as you said, communication is very important and um, making sure you guys are, are best friends and on the same page. Yeah. That helps a lot. Nice. Sounds a bit more like an architect and builder relationship then. Like, yeah, I, I think that's this? a good way to say it. <laughs> <laughs> going to be doing a bit more painting now. I think the essential pieces are in. I'm going to start to make more sense of it from here. Cool. So it's looking bipedal. Yeah. Uh, I actually might give it 
since it's meant to be more demon, I might give it the sort of beast um, chicken leg, the, the double, oh, yeah, double like joint the, legs. Oh yeah, like the hooves, the crazy What's backward. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's cool. So chat, we've got uh, about halfway through. So um, if you've got questions um, as we're going along, feel free to throw them in chat while we're going along. It's like take up like a crazy amount of like computer memory, like your fan spinning over there, or is it something you need to consider? Or do you think this kind of works for most um, setups? I think it's okay. I haven't had issues with that. Um, I have more problems trying to make videos than anything. Um, yeah. Yeah. A Premiere really uh, takes a lot out of my CPU, but Photoshop, as long as the file size is okay. And just for your reference, I'm working at 5K by three, and that's like a pretty standard size. I think that's like a sweet spot for something the PC can handle. And um, it gives me enough detail to work with, enough pixels to zoom in and, and get in there. Yeah, cool. So Festus in chat saying, I'm seeing some North, North American native art here now, like creatures you might see on a totem pole. Oh, yeah, that's interesting. I can see that. I hide these pieces. Okay, give me a bit more space now. Um, in fact, I might just merge this down so it's faster to edit and give our friends some space. Wow, okay, so you just merged everything. <laughs> everything yeah. except the original <laughs> kit stuff. Okay, cool. Yeah. And the advantage of that, um, as I said earlier, is I can start to liquefy now. And if I want to start to change some proportions or fix up some perspective, I can do that. Cool. So because this guy's standing at three quarter, I need to make sure the side further away from us is a little bit smaller compared to the part that's closer to us. Right, so this is about perspective of yeah. like how it would be realistic. Yeah, that's cool. Exactly. And that's quite tough to um, control when you kit bash. So mm. it might be easier to kit bash a character that's like standing front on if it's your first go. Uh, and as you improve, you can introduce like the more unique poses. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Do you always start? Do you always start at the head? I know you started at the head and kind of started bringing it down. Is that is that typical or? Yeah, um, I think that's good because it's starting to define what the character is. I think mm. for characters, I love the style and like the shape language and um, the identity of the character comes from the head. So designing that first makes it easier for me as well. Cool. Um, got another question. Um, this one's also about your course. Um, what yeah. inspired you to create your latest course was it a collaboration um it was all done by me but it's sort of uh i was invited by class 101 to do it and i've always wanted to do a course i feel like i have some unique knowledge that i want to share about concept art and um i guess my story is something that i want people to know that like um it's possible to get into this with within like a short amount of time and even if you start kind of late and mm. um i sort of talked about that a little bit in my introduction in the course as well so um i only started when i was around 23 which isn't too late um but i got hired in two years so i that's why i feel like uh the, the course that i made basically is a condensed version of what i learned and um all the struggles i went through and all the things i wish i knew before mm. Um, so I didn't have, maybe I could have done it even faster if I, if I had this information as well. Right. Um, that's basically why I wanted to create that course. That's super cool. Two years doesn't seem like a, a very long time. Is it because you crammed a lot <laughs> in those two years? Like a lot of dedication? I think, um, I think that's part of it. Uh, another big part was, as I said, like I really focus on the enjoyment of art as well. Um, you can make things very efficient, right? And, and study 
um, fundamentals and like the old masters and all that to improve your art. But if you're not having fun, you'll, you'll eventually burn out. And I made sure I really enjoyed that process of learning so that every day I could come in and enjoy what I'm doing and, and be motivated to, to work. Uh, besides that, I think it was also about um, how I approached my study. So, uh, as I said, like fundamentals isn't something I put a lot of time just purely focusing on. I would put fundamentals in and combine it with um, doing some personal pieces. So, mm. for example, if I wanted to improve my anatomy, I would be not just like studying figure drawing and just uh, studying muscle groups. I'd be painting a piece that I know I'm not good at uh, for the pose. So I pick a right. pose that I'm, I'm struggling with and use that to study um, anatomy at the same time. Nice. And that's to keep it enjoyable, but also kind of building your portfolio and working on a weakness. That's cool. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, it's really smart. Multiple advantages to that. Mm. Yeah, so it's like a really intelligent kind of use of, of time which is always the hardest thing for everybody, I think. Yeah. And nice. yeah, there's like, there is like more efficient ways if you can handle it, right? If you can do all that fundamental study, then that's, you know, that's good for you. But a lot of people can't. And I know that I'm not, I'm not that kind. Like in school, I wasn't the type to spend a lot of time studying. So I could tell that I probably, I'm probably not the type to force myself to just focus on um, fundamentals and not have fun with it. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, so um, yeah, just some comments on that. Uh, Festus, like, yeah, no kidding. After two years, I maybe had the basics of Photoshop down and I was looking to move into the intermediate zone. So yeah, I guess it, it's funny, isn't it? Because you think about, it's often advice of getting the fundamentals right and everything like that, but it can be super boring. That's why they're the fundamentals. Um, if you're not applying it to anything um, that feels real, is real for yourself, like a brief you've given yourself or a goal or target, um, then it can you can burn out as as um, Jeff mentioned. Yeah. And the brief that you mentioned is actually a very good point as well. Um, in the course that I did, I talk about brief writing and then people, mm. people skip through this. Um, you should be writing a brief for yourself and trying to answer a question in concept art because that's a lot of what we do. Where I like to call it um, visual problem solver. So we're solving a problem visually and the, the problem is oftentimes a brief that we get, we get from a client or from like our art director. Uh, so getting the habit of that, writing a brief, um, that's all very, very uh, a big part of this. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> um, yeah, Joe in chat saying, uh, I think the art and creation is already fun. Trying to stop that being drained away is the hard part. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. This is looking amazing. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> I'm still sort of struggling with finding the design, I think. I'm, I rearranged some of the proportions a little bit, like you saw the legs being Yeah. Used. Um, but it's getting there. I like the colors that we started off with, so yeah. I'm, I'm enjoying it too. And for the moment, I'm not too fussed about lighting and um, how everything's sort of making sense in terms of this looking like a real character yet. I'm more focused on the design and making sure that's looking good. And then those are the next steps I'll focus on in the next live stream. So I'll be going over the rendering and making it feel neat. Um, so yeah, purely design at this point. Nice. There's a, te there's a teaser. Ladies and gentlemen, you're yep. gonna have to, <laughs> that's our cliffhanger um, as we get towards the end of our episode. Um, you have to tune in um, when we do that and that will be in 48 hours. So whatever the time is for you now, in two days time. It's the easiest way to deal with it because I know we get people from lots of different places tuning in. Um, so there was a question, another question around, we're, we're talking about, yeah, burning out essentially. So um, mm -hmm. any tips on taking care of yourself to avoid burnout? Um, it's not really something I deal with, if I'm honest. Uh, I did have a time when I 
just played games. I think it was during my first year of like study and I was hitting a wall and I played games for just two months. Like basically that was like my full time thing. <laughs> just to play yeah. games. I just log into Destiny and and like do all the content on that. Um, I think what got me out of it was expanding on my knowledge and not trying to charge into everything um, head on. So mm. watching YouTube videos about art, um, maybe buying <laughs> oh, this sounds like a terrible plug. I'm not trying to plug my own thing, but like buying a course um, to help expand like the amount of tools that you can use to help create your art mm. that can that can help tremendously. Um, because we're hitting that wall for a reason, and sometimes we can't see what that reason is. So with more knowledge, we might be able to problem solve um, how to jump over that wall. Um, other times when I'm just not feeling motivated, but I have to draw for for work or something. I like to start off with just a light sketch. That's not, I'm not trying to impress anyone with it. I'm not trying to prove that this is, is going to be like the next best piece for me either. It's just something purely for relaxing and for enjoying art. Mm. Um, because we, we sometimes forget that, right? Like we, we, we set this mentality that when we start a new piece, this is going to be the next one that's going to um, blow everyone away and make myself proud as well. But yeah. then you're not enjoying art for like the reason we started art. It's mm. the fun and like creating and enjoying. Yeah, that's super true. Mm. Nice one. Um, checking in with chat again. I did miss the pun before, fundamentals. Yeah, I like it. <laughs> <laughs> hardly, <laughs> hardly fun. <laughs> yeah, not always the fun of fundamentals. Yeah. Um, I always just think of that office office episode where they're doing the you'd be mental not to have fun. Um, uh, the colors here. Now. Are you? Yeah, <laughs> such a chill show. You could just put it on the background and just whatever. Walk out of the room, come back. It doesn't matter. Um, <laughs> so, mentioned in chat from Johanna. The colors here are wonderful. It's always nice to see epic creature designs lean into the vibrant and bright colors instead of only mel uh, melding into the dark side. Yeah, that's true. Yes. Like you know, you do see that. You do see that like quite a lot. Is that something that you're you're conscious about? Like it'd be like an evil character, but if I mean, I guess if it's black on black, it's not maybe less exciting than adding color. So yeah, what's your approach to color? Um, so I used to do a lot of the really dark fantasy looking things, and I guess I'm a little bit bored of it as well. Um, if you look at some of my recent stuff. You'll see, I'm starting to introduce color a lot more. So, um, like magenta is like a color you'll see pretty often. Mm. Um, but if I draw lights, I add colors that you wouldn't typically see. Funky colors on a dragon. <laughs> um, yeah. Iridescence in like armor pieces. Uh, where's like a super vibrant one that I did? Can't find it now. Um, but I think making it successful because you can't just throw clashing colors on and, and hope mm. that it works. You really have to know the, the fundamentals of color and that's a pretty quick one to learn so you know the color wheel learning about the different color schemes like complementary colors or split complementary analogous knowing all that first and coming in um, knowing what the accent color is that you want in this case it's pink um, so if i made the yellow super vibrant this then we're going to start to clash with um, the pink and I don't want that. So I can still keep yellow, but the yellow has to be a lot more dull. So if you look here on the uh, color square thing, mm -hmm. it's a lot less vibrant. So that allows the pink to, to stand out. Nice. Dante is saying some of the most poisonous or venomous things are colorful. Very true. And in the yeah. ocean as well. That's a good point. And that's fun stuff to look at for reference to. Um, really vibrant looking insects or like mushrooms. Um, I have boards for those as well, insects and mushrooms. I don't know if you saw. <laughs> in that in your, in, your Pinterest, <laughs> in your Pinterest thing? Yeah. yeah. There are really cool frogs. Um, I, <laughs> I really want to take this chance to, to show it off. Um, you going to show me a cool frog? Let's do it. I'm going to show you a cool frog. <laughs> <laughs> Look at these frogs. Look at, Look at this guy. He's got 
crazy spikes for <laughs> eyebrows. He's got bubbles on his head. This vibrant little friend here. Wow. Looks really awesome. So creating characters out of this will be super, super fun. And um, right. actually, I do want to talk about like a challenge that I do on Discord as well, which is where um, this came out. Mm. Uh, we do something called Concept Club on Discord. And I'll show you guys what happens. It's basically we get three image images weekly um, and we create a concept out of that in one hour. Cool. Um, and I do funny names each time. Um, <laughs> and you can see what other people have done so we basically use those as inspiration to um practice our concept creation nice. yeah. cool so if you guys want to take part in that we have three different time zones as well so uh, it, it accommodates for everyone you can join the discord and um yeah enjoy it nice check it out i'm sure johanna will um has that link to your discord so if anyone's keen to join that try it out um it's a great great community i'm sure we have some jeffs in um in chat as well so, yeah, movement was yeah. is one of them. Yeah, tropical fish. Um, good color reference yeah. as well. Yeah. Frogs are the best, says Steve. Absolutely. They're pretty cool. Um, quick note on designing. I haven't had much opportunity to talk about it since I was so focused, but um, basically at this point, when I talk, when I say I'm focusing on design and less about the fundamentals of like lighting and like making it feel um, realistic, I'm talking about how it looks in like a grayscale mode. So I'm trying, I can sort of, I can sort of see it. I think for some people you might want to set um, a huge slider down the saturation. Um, and then you can view it in grayscale and you want to see that difference in value. You want to see uh, different materials stand out from each other. And to do that, you want to assign unique values to each one. So the pink is like a more of a mid-tone. Um, the scale or like, I guess the armor is more light. And then we have like the dangerous parts or like the body parts with the darker value. And our attention will be drawn to, uh, well, like, I guess we'll be able to figure it out visually because mm -hmm. of that. Um, so when we see the black parts, we'll be like, okay, that's probably the dangerous part because everywhere else on this concept is is telling me that as well. Right. So um, that's sort of what I'm figuring out at the moment. Oh, that's cool. I like that. Uh, yeah, so anyone interested in joining um, Jeff's um, Discord channel, it's super cool. Um, check it out. It's like a super engaged community. Um, that you, you guys have over there um, with some lovely people and some amazing artists. So check it out. Um, Jana yeah. shared that directly. There's some really helpful people there. Yeah. That's cool. And we've got about six minutes left. So last chance for any questions, guys, as we're going along. I'm surprised this question hasn't come up before, but it almost always comes up. Um, what are you drawing with? Uh, using a, a pen, like a stylus of some kind? I'm using the Wacom Intuos 4, and I've got like, yeah, just a stylus. Um, and obviously Photoshop, that's like the most standard um, setup that I have. So there's going to be a weapon here. Bringing on the weaponry. Yep, yep. What's it look like? It's just got his fist up. Damn you! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was actually, you know what? No, I, no, I realized. Yeah. It's like, curse you, Jeff. Give me a <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a name? The characters. Um. Sad thing about concept art is you don't get attached to your characters like you used to. Um, people, when you like. I can tell how new someone is to concept art if they're still calling their characters OCs, which is like original characters, or yeah. they named them, which is, uh, like I said, like when you work with a client, they're not going to take your original character or like the first thing you draw. Mm. And if you name them and they're like, no, we don't like this character, you're going to be, you're going to take it personally and feel hurt. So uh, <laughs> I let, I normally let my viewers 
decide names for my characters. Nice. I love that. It's very otherwise practical. Very otherwise, names. you're going to get so attached to them. <laughs> exactly. Well, it's like any movie where they sad. like discover a stray, and then the kids name the kids name the pet. And they're like, oh, don't name it. <laughs> oh no, it's going to die. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in those movies, they always do. We've already got a name suggestion, uh, Sever, which is pretty. <laughs> there we it's go. Gonna sever, sever you with the big blade. Yeah. <laughs> and I noticed that the blade is going like out of the out of the scene at the moment. But something that I've seen you do with the speed painting before, when we've had you on, um, and also here, I think I saw you like you just stretch the canvas up, right, to accommodate for the character if you wanted to. Um, yeah, I think. Um, you don't have to make everything fit into the screen either. Sometimes mm -hmm. it's better just to give a suggestion of how big it is by letting it go off the screen and that actually helps mm -hmm. the composition instead. Uh, I feel like I want to bend his leg. It feels less creature-like because it's so, it's so stiff. So I might want to uh, give them a bit more dramatic pose, which is not like this. I'm just <laughs> still editing. Chat's still, chat's checking out the names. Um, Johanna suggests just name them all. Susan. Um, Susan, what's a good name? <laughs> Tatonka Raven Blanco is the suggestion. <laughs> what was that? Tatonka Raven Blanco. That's a very specific name. It I is very like specific. We need an explanation. To, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> waiting for someone to be like, hey, name a character and... and it's, it's been like, like five years since I had that name. I've been waiting for this day. Um, yeah. <laughs> okay, here we go. Uh, Tatonko is Buffalo in native Cree. Blanco is white. So Buffalo, white, raven. Oh, okay. That's that's pretty cool. Pretty cool. I like it. Had the explanation ready to roll. Thanks, Steve. Feel very suspicious to me. I feel like they've been waiting for that moment. <laughs> <laughs> I like this. Maybe we'll ro roll these names over um, into the next stream as well, and we'll we'll give the stream then a chance um, to to name. So we'll make a note yeah. of these as well. Johanna, maybe you could help me out making a note of some of these names. Um, yours is Mr. Slice and Dice Man. Okay, I like it. <laughs> uh, Festus is saying uh, his his head and horns look like a buffalo. That's cool. Um, Movement says he could uh, looks like he could give Virgil a run for his money from DMC. Um, name it Jeff, <laughs> says Andrew Park. Jeff. Yeah. Uh, that'd be even harder mm. to give it away if they're just all, everything's like Jeff. That's got, that's got kind of more like a Smurfs kind of vibe, I would imagine, after a while. <laughs> just like... It's just, just Jeff. Just Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. I guess Jeff does sound pretty intimidating. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I looked away for one second and now he's crouching. It's like a completely different position. He's facing a different way. He's got... Yeah. Yeah. Wow. It's changed so fast. That's super cool. Gotta give him a rock to stand on. Nice. And that's he just became like to far more here. agile. Like he quickly changed from like almost this tank, like you know, ungulate type character to like this kind of more stealthy, um, like light, like with that pose yeah. and everything. It's just yeah, it's, it's huge. A little wild to me. Yeah. Yeah. More like a like a hunter or a tracker or something that's cool uh, we've only got a minute yeah, left nice. oh really okay okay it's gone quick oh. um it's gone really fast <laughs> it does <I> <laughs> that. <laughs> it does it does but that's cool because we have another stream um on thursday which we mentioned a couple of times um yep yeah let's take a kind of final look at this and we'll need to do yep. our wrap up wow it's come along really fast so uh yeah please don't please do Join in uh, with us. Uh, it's next Thursday at 12 p.m. here in Sydney if you're in the U.S. or Pacific time. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Almost made it the whole stream without coughing. Um, it is 7 p.m. Um, Pacific time. So we'd love to see you hang out with us again. Um, and you're just bringing up the hues and saturations, which I think we're probably going to see a bit more of um, yep. on, on Thursday. Yep. And a lot more rendering. And a lot more rendering. All right. Awesome. Thanks, everyone in chat. And thanks, Jeff. It's been great hanging out with you again, and I'm looking forward to Thursday. Likewise. Thanks, Lynn. All right. See you then. See ya.